Hi, today is day two of our discussion of similar, similarity in some of our triangles. And in this day, we're going to talk about the angle-angle triangle similarity theorem. And we start this in our, from going to your Google Classroom, you can call up this lesson, which is in Desmos. And the first thing we'll look at is the objectives. I can prove two triangles are, with two corresponding angles that are congruent are similar. And the second thing is I can reconfigure two similar triangles to have like configurations so that I can solve problems. That's our goal for today. Going to page two, we have a warm up in which you see this link. The idea is to be able to make the two triangles that are the same. Now here I've got them the same. So I'm gonna start off with this angle. I can use this link to show that these two angles are the same. And when I change it, when I move this around, everything else changes with it. Now here, this, I'm going to link to this angle. They've got to be the same degrees though. So I need to make this the same, make this the same degrees, make this 36 and 35. So if I click on this and I can make them the same. And you can move these around by grabbing the middle of them. And you can see that if I change one of the angles here, these triangles are all going to, always going to change in the same type of way. I can also move these triangles to line up the vertices. They have lined up the ones that are blue. If I click on it, I can rotate this. When you rotate, you have to rotate around a point. I'm going to rotate around the blue point. And notice I can rotate anything where I'm going to rotate until it lines up with this, with this ray. Um, and now I'm going to reflect it across this ray. So I use the reflection tool. So when I reflect it across this to, this line, you can see that these match up. They all have the same angles, but they're not the same size. It, it means it's a dilation. And I can use this tool around. I'm going to dilate it around this point. So when I make it bigger, you can see that there is a finite set of rigid transformations and a dilation that maps the one onto the other. That means that these two are similar. So if you look at the next page, not this page, sorry. One figure, similar figures. This comes from our, from our reference table and you can find the link of it here. The definition of similar figures is that one figure is similar to another if there's a sequence of rigid motions and a dilation that takes the first figure to the second, so that it exactly over, overlays the second. So in, in our case, two triangles are similar. If there's a sequence of rigid motion transformations, that takes the first figure to the other, and a dilation that, that makes it map, fit exactly over the second. A dilation, by the definition, is written here. And so in this activity that's coming up, we wanted to prove that the two triangles the corresponding angles are similar. Uh, with two triangles with two corresponding angles that are congruent are similar. By finding a sequence of rigid motions and dilation that map the pre-image onto its image. And so again, if we take this as our starting point, we know that angle 80 matches up with angle 80, 38 matches up with 38. And I can move this translated I can rotate it about this point, so that the, so the, the point B is on ray uh, CF or EF, and then I can reflect it across this point. And this works for any two triangles if they are similar. I don't want to do that. I want to reflect it. So I'm going to reflect it across this, this line. Notice all the angles match up, 62, 62, 38, 38, 80, and 80. And now I'm going to dilate it with a dilation around this point. That's my center of dilation. And you can see how these all match up. Yes, they do make, make sense. This works. This is a visual proof. You'll notice that in this activity, you were to demonstrate a sequence of rigid motions and dilations exist that map one triangle onto another, even the two triangles, two angles of the one triangle are congruent to two angles of the second. And this was done visually. We translated, we rotated, reflected, 
and then we um, dilated. And we could have written down every one of the steps, but instead we just did it visually. We call this the angle angle triangle similarity theorem. So make sure that this makes its way into your chart. Again, if you want to chart on page three, there's you can find the link. This next part may be the most important thing I say about the geometry class. I don't know. There are five configurations you are likely to encounter. You won't find this in the textbook. This is me in my observation as a teacher for 15 years of geometry noticing. And I'd give them a name. I call it the parallel in, parallel out, butterfly, crazy, and the geometric mean. <clears throat> and for each of these, the goal is to rearrange them into transform them to rearrange them so that they were of like configuration. You want to do this so that you can set up a proportion that is a true proportion and solve it. Let me just talk about this just a moment. In class, I went through this individually, and I'll do it here too. When it's the parallel in, and I will draw this, it's going to look something like this. Here's one line and a second line that's parallel. These two are parallel. Notice they have all uh, corresponding angles. So these two angles are congruent. These two triangles, the small one and the large one, also have this angle in common. So it is the reflexive property that says that this is the same as itself. I can redraw these, and I suggest that you do this on every one of them. You're going to redraw these like this. Here we have this angle at the top. I also have the corresponding angles marked here and here. With it marked like this and then set up, I can draw I can make a proportion, A is to B, as C is to D. If I have parallel lines and <clears throat> I connect them, again, parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. Here I have a vertical pair. This angle is congruent to this because it's a vertical pair. Notice by the angle, angle triangle similarity theorem, these two triangles are similar. I can reconfigure the top one by rotating it. So I'm going to use this as one of my figures. Where I have one tick and two ticks, and I'll redraw the other one where I have one two ticks up here and one tick down there when I rotate this. Then I can list the sides and actually come up with a true proportion and then solve it. There's one that we call that I call the butterfly. It looks something like this. And I'm giving you that two angles are congruent. Where's the second set of angles, the second pair of angles? Notice these are vertical pairs. These are also congruent. And so I can redraw these. I'll draw the first one. It looks kind of like the original. I'll draw the second one to where it looks like this. It looks like the same. Now I can make a pair of <clears throat> a proportion. The one that's crazy, you'll definitely want to do this on this one. So here if I have this triangle, and I have this triangle. So there's a this angle would be the same as this one. What other angle for this small triangle and this large triangle is going to be congruent to each other? Someone tried to tell me this angle, but this angle is only in the large triangle. It's not in the small one. Someone said it's one of these angles up where they intersect. Yes, this might be in the triangle, but this is not part of the triangle. This is the, neither of these angles are part of the triangle. If it's this one, I already know that this is going to be the supplement of this, but this is not part of a triangle. It's part of a quadrilateral. This angle is, by the reflexive property, congruent to both the small triangle and to, in the large. So I can redraw this. You know, watch how I do this. I'm going to mark the angles. When I mark the angles, that helps me to be able to re rewrite the original with the same configuration. Here I have to flip it and um, and rotate it, flip it and rotate it. So it's going to be like here and here. The last one is the geometric mean. We will spend a full day on the geometric mean. That's when I have a right triangle and I drop an altitude from the right angle. There are actually three triangles here, a small one, a medium, and a large, and they are all similar. We will discuss that later. So here are some examples. Determine whether each pair of the triangles is similar. If it is, tell me what reason and write a triangle similarity statement. I've, I've given a triangle symbol over here so that you could actually use this. This is what a triangle similarity statement looks like. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So if it's true, and you'd have to match up the angles properly. 
So for example, here we have 48, 90, and this third angle, if you do, they have to add to 180, so you subtract these two from 180, you get 42. And then I do this one here, and I get this angle would be 48. So you can find the third angle if you know two. And if two of the angles are congruent, we know that the angles are similar, because if you, two of them were congruent, that means that all three would be congruent as well. Now, one student wrote this. Triangle F, G, H is similar to J, K, L. And they did not put a triangle symbol here. You need to have a triangle. And this is still incorrect because F has to match up with the other angle that's 42, that's K. It does not match up with a 90 degree angle. One student wrote this, F, H, G is congruent to L, J, L, J, K. They got the right angles in the same place, but they didn't get the other ones right. When you do a triangle under similar statement, they have to match up. Here, 85 plus 35 is equal to 60. And since 60 is not part of my second figure, these do not match. 40 plus 50 is equal to 90, not 55. These two are not similar. Here we have 25 and 82, and this, this third degree is, is third angle is 73. This angle would be 82. So I have triangle C, and C is going to be similar to triangle U. My second angle is D, which is 82. The angle that's 82 here is going to be S, and then 73, which is E, and E pairs up with T. Similarity statement is a tilde, not to be confused with the congruent symbol, which is a tilde over an equal sign. So describe the error in this and then using the angle angle similarity theorem. Here we have to not only describe it, but we also have to solve it correctly. And I'm going to show you both of these. You would spend some time on this. I would give time during class for you to think about it. One person said, well, th this angle should be smaller. It should, it's, it's the parallelogram, and this is a trapezoid. This is not a trapezoid, by the way. At least I don't know. Maybe it is a trapezoid. If this is a parallelogram, this would be a trapezoid. But I'm given two angles, and the angles don't, don't change. So what's wrong with the proof? Don't tell me that this angle has to be different. What's wrong with the proof is that angle angle triangle similarity theorem only works for triangles. And that brings and begs the question, is there a quadrilateral similarity rule? One person in one of my classes today made up one. He's called it the angle, 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 quadrilateral similarities. And so if you have three angles that correspond to each other that are in a row correct, uh, congru congruent, then the two figures would be. And I think that would work. That's not something that I'm going to be teaching, but that's something that he taught. Now, what's wrong with this? is that the person didn't break it out into two triangles like I explained to you to do. So I have four and I have six and the two angles. And why are these two similar? Well, I have the angle congruent to itself up here. I also have corresponding angles here and here. So this angle corresponds to this one. On this one, this side is X. How long is this side? It is not five, it's nine. So when I go to set up a proportion and I'm looking for X, I'll put X on the top. X is to four. Six, that is the large triangle, is to the large. Notice how when I rearrange it, I can easily set up the proportion. A, a large triangle is to small, large triangle is to small, as nine is to four. When I cross multiply, I get x is equal to 54 over four, which is 27 over two, 27 halves. And now we come to several problems. I'm going to work through them here for you. Normally I would wait and give you time and work through maybe two of them at a time, but there are several of these and they're in the different configurations that I told you that you were likely to run into. And then we come into this problem, which is particularly difficult. Let's go that far. <clears throat> if you're watching this video, you can skip ahead to anyone that you don't understand. I'm going to leave this triangle alone and I'll reconfigure the other one so that it is a like configuration. So I'll have one hash mark, one, I mean, one arc, one arc, and a hash mark. So when I redraw this other one, it should look like this, one arc, one arc, and a hash mark. The one with the hash mark is A, 
one with the arc is B, and this would be C. Between A and B is Y. Between C and A is 3, that's over here. And between C and B is X. So you can see this really cleans it up for me as far as knowing which side to pair up with which one. And I'm not always going to get nice answers. You might have looked at this and said, well, this is 6 and this is 3. So this would be 8 and this would be 4 and this is 12 and this is 6. And that's not necessarily so. You'll see that in this problem. I'm going to write X is to 6 as 3 is to 8. It would not be right to go 8 is to 3. I would be going X smallest to large as large as to small. No, it's, you're going always in the same direction. It doesn't matter which direction I go. I want to put the X on top, though. Same with the Y. I want it to be on top. So I'll say Y is to 12 as 3 is to 8. And now when I multiply both sides by 6 here, I get X is equal to 9 fourths. When I multiply both sides by 12 here, I get 36 over 8. So Y is equal to 9 over 2. I will leave this triangle alone. Notice I have alternate interior angles. Those are congruent. And I have a vertical pair. So when I reconfigure this second one to be like the first one, it should look like this with my dot here and my thing because I've got a dot thing. So between the dot and this is 10. This other long side is 12. We're going to call this side WX, and we'll call this side PY. So this is PY. So WX from the small triangle is to 12 as 5 is to 10. For the second side, I will say PY, PY is to 3 as 10 is to 5. So when I multiply both sides by 12, I get 60 over 10. So WX is equal to 6. When I multiply both sides here, I get 30 over 5. So I get PY is equal to 6. Now, if you were clever, you might have noticed, and I'll mark this on here, going from 5 to 10 in this direction is a scale factor of times 2. So 3 going to PY would be 6. Since it's times 2 going in this direction, going in the opposite direction would be times 1 half. So if I went from the 10 to the 5, I'd be timesing it by 1 half. So 10 times 1 half is 5. 12 times 1 half is 6. This would be 6. Here we have two triangles. The sides I'm missing, I'll label this as X and this as Y. Here I have my original triangle. I'm going to reconfigure this other triangle to match it up. Vertical angles are congruent. Those two are congruent. Uh, vertical angles are here. These are alternate interiors are also congruent. So I'm going to mark my triangle like this with a tick and a dot. The dot and the between these two is Y. The side going from the one side to the blank is 7, and this side is X. Now I can set up my proportion. X is to 16 as 7 is to 21. 7 is to 21 simplifies to 1 over 3, so I could write x is to 16 as 1 over 3. Multiply both sides by 16. x is equal to 16 thirds. Oh, but that's not a nice number. No, but this is not 7th grade either. You could also set the y proportion. y is to 12 as 7 is to 21, and you could solve it. Here I'll break apart the triangles. Notice I have these two triangles are corresponding angles formed by a transversal crossing parallel lines. I have this angle is congruent to itself. So I can draw the first one like this. I'll draw the second one just like it. And I get 4 It goes here, 7 goes here. This long side is 11. And I'm looking for this guy. So x is to 7 as 11 is to 4. So my x value is equal to 77 fourths. That's this long distance here, x, hj. This one is crazy. You'll notice that this angle is common to both of them. If 
by the reflexive property is congruent to itself. So I'll redraw both of these triangles. I'm looking for this little distance. We'll call this X. So when I have my two ticks and one tick, to draw the large triangle without even looking at it, I'm going to draw it to where it looks the same, two ticks and one tick. Here I have eight and nine. For this one, between the two ticks and the one tick, I have nine plus X. And for the long one, this side here, which is between the two ticks, and I have 12 plus eight, which is 20. And now I can write the proportion. I'll put this guy on top because I'm looking for the X. Nine plus X is to eight as 20 is to nine. When I cross multiply, I get 81 plus 9x. Notice this is like it's in parentheses when you distribute the 9. It has to go to both of them. is equal to 160. Subtract 81 from both sides. 9x is equal to 79. And divide both sides by 9. I get x is equal to 79 over 9. And that's almost 9, but not quite. this triangle, corresponding angles. You could redraw this. You could label the side lengths. This would be four and seven. Did I just do this one? This is 13 and this is X. Here I have corresponding angles and I have this is congruent to itself. So I could write go to itself, one tick, and like this. So I have the two ticks and the one tick. This length is 12. This whole length is 15. This is five. Oh, it's a scale factor of three or one third if I'm going this direction. So one third of 12 is going to be four. This distance is four. This is a classic problem. It was used by Napoleon when he wanted to fell a tree and cross a river. I will draw the vertical angles here. And since these lines are parallel, I'm going to go like this. When I draw my triangles and separate them, I have two ticks and one tick, two ticks and one tick. I have 104. And here, where the two ticks and one tick are, let's see where the one tick is, and this distance is five, is six. And where the two ticks are, I have eight. And this is what we'll call X. So X is what I'm looking for. I'll put it on top. X is to six as 104 is to eight. Notice I'm going largest to small, largest to small. And then you can solve it. This is the most interesting problem of all the ones we've talked about so far. I'm looking for this distance. Let's call it X. We're given that the whole distance here is six. Well, distance here is 10. How much is this piece? How much is this piece? This is a square. This is going to be X. The whole thing is 6. So this piece must be 6 minus X. Now, I can set up two triangles. Did you do this? Here's 6 and 10. Here's X. And this is 6 minus X. So when I set up the proportion, I have 6 minus x is to x as 6 is to 10. I'm doing the short side to the long side, short side to the long side. When I cross multiply, I'll put this in parentheses. I have 60 minus 10x is equal to 6x, and you can solve it the rest of the way. Now, what's wrong with this picture? You'll notice that, hmm, this isn't quite right, is it? What's going on here? If I were to separate the two triangles, the lines are parallel, so these two angles should be the same. And this angle is the same for both of them. Here we have 3.5. Here we have 2. This whole length is 9.5 and 6.5. When you do this, it doesn't work. 
you can't say 3.5 is to 9.5 and that when you multiply that it's going to give the same as 2 over 6.5 it doesn't work it's not true so one of the measurements is wrong same with this here we have a vertical pair if i were to redraw this i'll draw it, redraw it like this with the one angle that's marked and here i'm going to reconfigure it I'm going to all this trouble. I'm doing it here because I expect you to do it. I think you should do it. This is 12 and 10. And on this one, next to the dot between the two, it's going to be 6. And on the one next to this side, is going to be 8. Wait a minute. 12. Did I put the 12 in the right place? Oh, and these two have to be the same. So if this is x, this would have to be x. And if you do the proportion... It's not going to work. It's not going to work. This angle, if it were marked can run up here, that would work, but it doesn't work. For the closing, you had these three. These two dots are in the same place. I'll rearrange this triangle to be the same dot. This between the dot and my angle is going to be 4. On the side with just the dot on it is x. On the side with just the angle on it is y. And now you can set up the proportion. Here. This is crazy. These two are the same. So if I mark it like this, the two and the one up at the top, that's the big one. And the, do it again, the two and the one up at the top. So between the two angles is X. Next to the angle, the one mark is just three. Next to the two marks is four. On the big triangle, this whole distance is 10. This is six. And this is x plus y. Oh boy, x plus y. Well, we're not going to worry about the y first. First we'll solve for the x, and then we can solve for the y. So I have x is to 10 as 3 is to 6. Oh, this is just a scale factor of 2, or a scale factor of 1 half going this way. So this x is equal to 5. I could solve it with the proportion. I could solve it with scale factors if I wanted to. And since it's one half going this direction, going this direction, it's times two. Four times two is eight. So x plus y is equal to eight. But x is five. Five plus y is equal to eight. So y is equal to three. And our last one. We're looking for y. We're looking for x. Notice, I'll separate the two triangles. I have the one angle marked. I'll mark the second angle, which is the common angle. I could have marked these two. Those are also corresponding angles formed by transversal crossing parallel lines. 15, 10, Y. This whole distance is going to be 39, uh oh, 39, 10 plus X, and 52. To set up a proportion for Y, y is to 52 as 15 is to 39. You can solve this. I could also say 10 plus x, from the large triangle to the small, is to 10 as, and I'll put this in parentheses so that you don't make a mistake when you go to solve it, as 39 is to 15. And that's it. So good luck. And, oh, let's see, what, is there anything else? One, two, three. I think I got to the end. The attribution, this is something that I've created. So good luck and success.